All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce you to this bout here, this one in the bantamweight division, and it is sponsored by Q State Electrical. Introducing uh, to you first, standing across in the blue corner, weighed in officially 61.50 kilos. Ramadan now Dedito Guam, trained out of the Benevente Striking Academy and beat up BJJ. His professional record, three fights, one win, and the two losses. Make some noise, this is Peter Benevente! Standing across in the red corner, he weighed in officially 61.55 kilos. From Brisbane, Queensland, he's trained out of the base training centre. Brings to the cage tonight his professional record of 14 fights, seven wins, and the seven losses. He is the one, he is the only. Come on, Brisbane, make some noise. This is Paul Logan! The crowd just erupting. In this fight, brought to you by Q-State Electrical, your one-stop shop for residential and commercial electrical. No job is too big or too small. Head to qstateelectrical.com.au to get in contact with the team. All right, here we go. Two flyweights coming off the bantamweight, both power and both hands. Oh, I like logo bantamweight. I like the idea of they're just having that little extra weight to throw around put into his strikes. Absolutely. We saw Benevente with his fight against Stuart Nickel. He can take some damage, man. Yeah, know? 100%. Uh, which is great because Paul can give it, you know? And I think this is what makes this, this super exciting. They can both wrestle. They've both got really good jiu-jitsu. Uh, this is going to be uh, definitely a fight of the night contender. Once, once we get through this filling out process and, and the gates open up, this is uh, going to keep everyone on the edge of the seat. Yeah, be careful what you wish for if you're Benevente. He initiated that grappling exchange, but Logan's no slouch. Exactly. From from the, the few rounds I've done with Paul back in the day at flyweight, man, he is seriously strong, you know? And everyone that I know that is training with him says the same thing. His physicality is probably one of his best assets. He's not a fight you ask for. Nobody no. asked to fight Paul Logan. No, no way. Oh, beautiful jab down the middle. Got flipped on the way in there. Oh, ball. good right hand. Benavente could be wobbled here. Yeah, if Hunt said that was a drop or if that was a, a level change, hard to tell. Either way, Logan's more than happy to, to assume position Absolutely. for the top half guard. And bottom half guard is not the place you want to be with Paul Logan on top. No, man. And MMA, it's such a different animal, isn't it? I'd rather be in bottom side control than bottom half guard. They sit on that leg, they neutralize it. You can't get your hips out. Absolutely. And, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is what got Benevente into trouble with Stewie Nickel in his last You're right, game. actually. You're definitely right. He's just hanging out there. He's, yes, he needs that explosiveness. If you're going to go, then you've got to go. He's not proactive on the bottom here. He's, he's trying to react to what Paul's doing. He's trying to use his time to stand up. But really, he needs to control the posture of Paul Logan. He needs to start getting on one hip, open that guard up, and start looking to either get back to his feet or get on top. Because on bottom, 100%. jammed up against the fence with uh, three minutes left on the clock of round one. This is not a good start for Benevente. And Paul will keep this up all day. Absolutely. Look, he's stacking the hips. I mean, why wouldn't you? The onus is on Benevente here. Absolutely. Benevente looks uncomfortable there. He doesn't look happy, you know? Um, I think a closed guard in this position is probably one of the worst things he could be doing. He needs I to agree. open that guard, put feet on the hips, look to try and create some space, get it like... Do look. something, get a hook, get yeah. a butterfly hook, look for a sweep, look for a get up, look to do something. You can't just hang on and yeah. hope the ref's going to save you at this point. Not at this high level of MMA. This isn't like amateur, like first or second fight. This is a, you know, a proper, a, a proper high level fight here, you know. And to your point, he finally opened up the closed guard because at some point with the closed guard, you're just ensuring that you don't get up. Exactly, but he's still using this bottom hook to hold Paul in half guard. Yeah. He's not actually allowing himself to stand yeah. up. He's, he's, he's holding Paul in a, in a favorable position. Like we said, this is MMA. This is not jiu-jitsu. But yeah. you're standing half guard. You can, you can do more damage from the half guard than you can from side control. 100%. And sometimes more than guard. Like, definitely more than guard. He's almost given away that. Exactly. Here we go. Now he's scrambled nice. back to his feet. That's what we need what we need to see. Paul Logan not even stopping for a second to look for any advantage. Getting both underhooks now. He's got his hands joined too. 
Paul Logo has uh, he's trained at a bunch of different gyms over the years, and I know for a fact that he's got top-notch wrestling. He's worked with, with uh, D1 wrestlers. Uh, Eric, Eric Simmons from the U.S. was based in the gym that uh, Paul used to fight out of. And I know that he's worked extensively with him. Don Marfan, a teammate of mine, has also worked with Eric. And I know that uh, he, he'll be very, very experienced in, in, the, in the wrestling game, you know? And he's uh, showing it here. And he's having to use some of it to defend against Benevente. Exactly. exactly. So you couple that with them working with the likes of Aaron Black and Damian Brown, you know that his, 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 his grappling is going to be where it needs to be for this fight. No easy rounds. Absolutely. Back on that up. And he, he knows how to use it. Every time he's got a, every time he's got an underhook, it's not there for show. No, I think an adventure might be split across the nose there. There's some flower coming from somewhere. Nice double leg there. Can he do anything with it? I think he's going to struggle. Paul's doing a good job of feeding that single to the knee, creating space. He's going to pop the head up. He's going to look to try and pop his head in, or maybe he's going to look for a front show. No, here we go. He gave up on it. Yeah. Logan's showing some shades of early BJ Penn, just bouncing around. Yeah. Only the only division of BJ Penn hasn't fought in, probably. <laughs> Benavente just giving up on some of those grappling positions. The fantastic round there. Absolutely. Hard to call. Hard to call. I, I, I'm probably going to lean in the favor, unofficially, of course, lean in the favor of uh, Paul Logo. I agree. You know, control time, not a lot of damage done by either fighter, but if we're looking at control time, aggression, and controlling yeah. center of the, of, of the cage, I'm definitely going to lean towards Paul Logo. 100%. He did more stuff that he wanted to do. Exactly. He got into those dominant positions on the ground. We were talking about those half, ground, uh, half guard, sorry, where he had ground and pound. Exactly. All this stuff. Yeah. Benavente, to your point, I mean, that bottom hook, you, you need to almost slide that one out and just make something of it, even if turtling up. Exactly. Being able to build your base so you can get up to your feet again. Yeah. Be interesting to hear what uh, Benavente's corner tells him to do here, you know. Um, is he gonna, are they going to tell him to keep it, try and keep it on the feet? Are they going to try and tell him to get on top, stay on top? It's, it's hard, It'll be interesting. It's say, almost, you know? Yeah, it's almost yeah. pick your poison. Exactly. You're full logo laughing and joking in the corner, very relaxed, you know. He lives for this, you know, that he absolutely loves a good scrap, you know, so... Uh, He's really in his element right now, and uh, we'll see. It's a funny one, isn't it? Sometimes, oh, and there's a rear hand. Logan just marauding forwards. Again, feeding that single back to the knee, looking to break the grip. Hand fight, he's going to pop the head up, he's going to try and stick his head through the middle there, he's going to win that head position. I mean, this is a pretty good position for Benevente. He's just not able to do anything with it. That's kind of been the, the tale of the fight so yep. far, right? Yep. He said to me at the weigh-ins yesterday that he was looking for a finish. Uh, I'm not sure where he's looking for the finish at this point because... It, it's not on the ground and it's not on the exactly. feet. Exactly. He's pulled guard here. Looking butterfly for, with the pinned feet to the butt. I mean, it's not where you want to be butterfly with your back flat on the mat. Exactly. I think he was looking to roll Paul Logo over the top yeah. of his head, but they were just too close to the cage, you know? There's easier uh, ways of getting your man to the mat. Yeah, exactly. Um, More high percentage ones for sure. Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure. I just have to say, I can smell the blood from the previous fight. That yeah. metallic, it smells like a, a pocket full of coins. Yeah. And it's become very, very noticeable. Logo going to work, doing everything right. Absolutely. He's doing everything right. Benavente's choosing to make this a jiu-jitsu thing. Yeah. To be honest, it, it seems like he's stalling. Yeah. Um, it looks like he maybe he's hurt, maybe he's tired, maybe he doesn't know what to do. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But flat on your back, double butterfly hooks, just grabbing onto the head like that is not a, uh, yeah. a po positive path to success in, in an MMA fight. It feels know? like it's a contingency plan because everything's going wrong. Exactly. Like he's looking for a sweep here, but he's, his bottom leg's actually not doing anything. He's got this butterfly hook now. But he's pulled over. He's literally just going to pass straight to half guard. He's put that hook back in again to hold him back in half guard. He, he needs to at least try to get his uh, his top leg, get his knee inside and try and create some space between yeah. them and to be able to clear the bottom leg. It seems like he's happy on his back just hanging on. Yeah. He's, it's like he's trying to limit and mitigate the damage rather than just being proactive and trying to get back into the fight. Exactly. We're halfway through the fight now. We need to see Benavente do something here. You know, at this point, 
the rounds and slipping away from him. Yeah. He's got a sweep now. He's up on top, but there's the wrestling of Paul Logan that I've talked about. 100%. You can see the difference in the urgency as well. Exactly. It's that scramble. You know what I mean? He was in a, a poor position for maybe three seconds. Yes. Because sometimes it's those poor positions where you just get too comfortable. It ends up being three minutes. Yeah. Paul Logan takes a deep breath, looking for Broly to explode like that. Looking to pass to that leg drag position and just sit on top of it and, and go to work again. I mean, two seconds before that, he was just making Damian Brown laugh. I've seen him laugh probably a handful of times. Yeah. And it takes your fighter <laughs> up against the cage with his opponent right before you. He takes him down to make him laugh. That's fantastic, man. Logan's just at home. This is his living room. Absolutely. This is where he does his best work in this grindy kind of fight like this, you know, where he's, he's in your face, he's doing damage, and he's just kind of just wearing Benevente out, you know? Yeah, um, I mean, if the, the plan for Benevente was to grapple and not go into the plan of, of standing and striking with Logan, Logan's going to Logan, man. He's going to do this on the ground as well. Absolutely. There's, like, there's no way he's not going to punch you. Absolutely. Benavente said to me at the weigh-ins yesterday, I said, what, what are Paul Logan's weaknesses? And he said to me, I don't really know, I'm just focusing on my strengths. So either he's just legitimately focusing on his strengths, yep. or maybe he hasn't done his research and realized how much of a dog Paul Logan yeah, actually is. Yeah, 100%. You know? And now he's starting to turn it up with the guard Logan, passing. And he's going to tie those legs up. Benavente looking to get up. He needs to, he needs to hang on to that wizard real quick. Yeah, um, finally gets it in. All the movements a little bit too broken up from Benevente. He gets the foot up. He might think about getting a wizard. Yeah, it's 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 very like uh, everything's done in stages. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And that's when you get a guy like that, whether he's tired or he's rocked or he's just mentally starting to fall apart. It's always easy, to, it's easy in the grappling department to break them back down again. When they're doing things in stages, you just take that stage back. Absolutely, he's allowing Paul Logan to gain control, gain, gain position before he starts to defend. You know, there's yes. no scramble there. Where yes. Paul Logan's known for his scramble, he's known for the It's chaos. on, it's on. Absolutely, that's where Paul Logan does his best work is in the chaos here. Looking for that knee up the, up the outside there. It looks like Benevente is pinning Logan to the fence here, but Logan's actually probably in more control than Benevente at this point, you know? He's calm, he's relaxed, he's not even breathing heavy. He just, just took picking that, his time yeah. to turn off the fence and to collect that leg. Here yeah, he go. just got that underhook back like it was nothing. Absolutely, he's going to look to uh, pummel back to that body lock there, or maybe he's going to go on that 50-50 end of the round. Yeah, very, very strong round there. And Benavente unable to capitalize, even when he's getting in good positions. Absolutely. He's, he's, he's been deep on a single leg. He's been deep on body, body lock, sorry. Yeah. And just not being able to take that next step. He, he looks physically and mentally beat at this point. You know, he, he, I think the answers that he thought he had for Paul, Paul Logan's questions have not been the correct answers, yeah. and he, he can't find the correct answers in the 15 minutes, you know. It'll be interesting to see how he approaches this one. Coming into the third, arguably he's down two rounds. He, need, he needs a finish, you know. Yep. I think even a big round's not going to do it for him at yep. this point. He definitely needs a finish, you know. At best, a 10-8 round will get him a draw. draw. No, I completely agree. It's just the fact of the matter at this point. Loga being able to initiate more situations where he's the dominant one. Absolutely. I think Paul's going to turn up the heat. He's going to put on a show for his, for his fans in the crowd here. And uh, he's, he's going to turn up the heat. Good show of respect from both boys here. Might have a little bit of extra gas in the tank. Being at bantamweight, and he's also got that powder keg power as well. Absolutely. Renovante looking to measure. Renovante seems to be intimidated by the power of Paul Logan. He sort of moves, he, Logan moves his feet, Benevente takes a step back. Exactly. Uh, Benevente is drawing him. Nice little body kicks there. He's starting to go Fair to work and he kick. eats one. Yeah, he eats one through his troubles. I can't see how Benevente is finishing the fight here. No, neither. I think he needs to... It's what he has to do. Yeah, he looks like he's grabbing the cage though. He's getting uh, slapped by Ian, Ian Bone here. Bit of clarity on the nose of... Paul Logan there from that shot. Yeah, but again, ben Benedetto is not doing a whole heap here. He's just kind of almost laying and praying at this point, right? He's just kind of pinned him against the fence, hoping to wear Paul Logan out. But I mean, there's four minutes left on the clock. It's time to work. You've got to pull the trigger. If you want to finish like you told me once yesterday, 
He really, really needs to start pulling the trigger and, and let his hands go, looking to set up some sort of submission, uh, which he's, he's not going to get from this position. You know, he's yeah. hooking the leg. He's listening to his corner well, but he's not really uh, capitalising what they're asking him to do. Just the, the listlessness of the arm and the overhook. I mean, he's not even working from there. No, exactly. If I'm Ian Bone, we've been here for over a minute, I'd be thinking about probably breaking the boys up. Yeah, exactly. At best, he's frustrating Logan. Exactly. Ball Logan turns him off the fence now. Benevente looks like he's got double unders. But again, he's not really doing anything with those yeah. double unders. He allows Paul Logan to swim that underhook every single time. Yeah. The double unders, he's, he's got in Paul Logan's armpits every time he gets it. You know, so there's not a lot you can really do from that. You can't get any sort of leverage or, or, or body fold or anything from that point. It just looks like he's trying to drive him into the cage. Exactly. Uh, I'd like to see him look to try and level change and attack the yeah, legs. Yeah, sure, anything but this. At this point in time, because it's just, it's a tree with no fruit. Exactly, and, and this is uh, frustrating for Paul Logan, but for the wrong reasons. This is not the fight that he wanted. He wanted, oh, he wanted a, a good old-fashioned fist fight. You know? Oh, who doesn't want to see Paul yeah. Logan in that? Deep on the single leg. Again, feeds it back to the knee. Benevente can't finish it. He's pinching the, the single with his knee, knees there, but that's yep. actually compromising his ability to be able to finish that single. Yep. He's just hanging on for dear life because he doesn't want to cop too much damage. I think just from the single leg position, Logo's hit more punches than Benevente has. I think he's hit more punches from that single leg yeah. position that Benevente's landed all, all fights. Yeah, it's, it's turning out that way. Seeking to grapple, but even the grappling isn't working out. Absolutely. And, you know, this is, we, we know that Benevente is a strong striker. We know that he's got yeah. strong jiu-jitsu. We know that he's an absolute Absolutely. brilliant fighter. You know, there's... He, he does the hard work, he puts in the rounds back in Guam, he's got some of the best training partners around, but Paul Logo is just that good tonight, yeah. he's just stuffing everything that, that Benevente is trying to do 100% and it's not a reflection on Benevente's skill or his ability it's highlighting Paul Logo's ability to be able to nullify it is, he's shutting him down Exactly. and Benevente being two rounds down I can't see that this is the path to victory when you've got a minute 30 odd left no, in exactly. this fight I think at this point he he kind of he kind of knows his fate. With Paul Logan dropping for the double leg now. I mean, why not pour it on? Exactly, showcase your skills, right? That's what we're here for. Pour it on. If you're on top, you're probably not going to eat any more damage than you need to. Paul Logan can definitely get to a dominant position and work towards a TKO from here. Absolutely. And I don't think there's re any real submission threat from Benavente. I don't no. think he's got the strength. He's definitely got the technical ability, but yeah. I don't think he's got the strength at this point of the fight against yeah. someone like Paul Logo. Uh, these kind of rabbit punches from here, trying to get him to turn his head so maybe he can look to set up an overplatter or control the wrist to look for a triangle or something like that is probably his best best attempt at this point. But again, flat on his back, double butterfly hooks. Uh, this is this is kind of just riding out the round yeah. a little bit here, you know. And is I think Paul Logo knows it too. He's kind of just, you know what? I've got this fight in the bag. I'm just going yeah, to run to the next position. one. I'll do a bit of damage and, uh, you know, uh, get back in the winner's circle and then, you know, start to, to rebuild from there. Uh, he's trying to posture up to land some more significant strikes, but Benavente is just, again, he's trying to mitigate the damage. Exactly. He's doing a good, nice up kick there, but again, too little too late, I think, at this point, you know? I mean, yeah, with 15 seconds left. Yeah. Especially someone like Paul, you know, you, you need a lot more than an up kick to put him away. Yeah. And Benevente is saying that he's, there's no way he's coming back to Australia to lose twice. I mean, it just wasn't the effort that we needed from him. Yeah, look, I, I think, uh, like we said, Paul's just done a good job of yep. nullifying him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Paul Logan is a huge, tall order for anybody. And that order just proved to be much too much for Benevente here tonight. As Absolutely. it looks to us like Paul Logan is going to have a landslide on the judges' scorecards. Benevente just never looking like he could implement any of his style, any of his game plan. It was an unfortunate look. And in front of us now, you can see even just... He's heartbroken. Yeah, he's heartbroken, man. Nobody wants to do that. You put the training in, you put the effort in, people pay to watch you. This is, watch these highlights here. There's a nice knee. Bro, he's got the ability. He's, he's got the ability, but I think... From the outside looking in, it looks to me that uh, Benevente just underestimated the strength and the power and the grit yeah. of Paul Logan. Yeah. Benevente is a big guy, especially when he fills out that frame at bantamweight. And Paul Logan's short for the division, man. He could have overlooked him. Who knows? Yes. But like I said before, Logan's going to Logan, man. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think when you 
You look at Paul Logan, he's fought at flyweight, he's fought at this, but he's a big flyweight. You know, look at him there, he's a big bantamweight, you know. He, he might be short, but he's, he's very thick and he's strong, you know. Yep. And uh, he's, he's had a lifetime of martial arts training that just builds that strength and uh, endurance in you that is hard to overcome. Absolutely, and Benavente himself could not overcome that tonight. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for both fighters. Again, a fantastic display. We go the distance, we go the journey, we go to the judges' scorecards. First scorecard reads 29 to 27. Second judge judges the contest 29 28. And the third and final judge scores about 30 to 27. All to your win by unanimous decision. And it goes to the red corner, Paul Logan. And the crowd erupts. After the judges pretty much stated the obvious, mate. Yeah, pretty much. It was exactly as we thought it was. Paul Logan doing everything right. Gets a nod. Benavente just not able to implement his game plan. And it was difficult to even see what his game plan was. Because yeah. Logan was just doing his thing. Yeah. Hard, hard to say, to be honest. Yeah. And the crowd still giving Logan so much love as we kick it over to James O'Shea. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we better get a few words from our very happy winner, Paul Logan. Welcome to Beatdown. What a performance. How was that for you tonight? It was, uh, it was tough. I come with a lot of pressure. Like, he didn't have many fights. I've had a lot of fights. I fought the best the country has to offer. So I felt a lot of pressure and I needed to get that win. I needed to get back in the win column after two losses. So I'm happy, I'm proud of myself, and I'm proud of my fucking team as well. Win, lose, or draw, I love you. You looked in complete control in there. Whatever he tried to throw, you seemed to have the answers. Did you feel in control for the, for the entirety of that one? Yeah, I did until I think he cut me open with a punch. Um, then my arms started getting heavy, and I was like, fuck. I just got to push through this, and I've done it plenty, so pushing is not a fucking drama for me. <laughs> You mentioned before you've fought the best, you've been in there with the very best. What's, what's the future hold for Paul Loga? Mate, um, I'm training at the base now under Damo and he pretty much walked me through that. That whole fight I was looking up, looking over. So whatever he says I'll do. But I just want to tell all the band weights in this country or any other country, I'm coming and fuck you. <laughs> well, there you go. That's a, that's a statement at a half lot. Last but certainly most least, I want to ask, what did that feel like walking out here, the sound of this crowd, it absolutely erupted when you walked through that door? Mate, I knew as soon as I fought on the north side, this place would be fucking packed, because I am the king of the north. Let's go! Well, there you have it, the king of the north, Paul Logan, congratulations. Oh, happy fighters.